Kiliani Fisher Synthesis The Kiliani Fisher Synthesis, named for German chemist Henry Kiliani and Hermann Emil Fisher, is a method for synthesizing monosaccharides. In this procedure, we can increase the chain length by adding one carbon atom to the aldehyde end of the aldose. It can be described by the synthesis of d triose and d erythrose from d aldehyde. Addition of hydrogen cyanide to aldehyde produces two epimeric cyanohydrins because the reaction creates a new chirality center. The cyanohydrins can be separated easily since they are diastereomers and each can be converted to an aldose through hydroly hydrolysis. Acidification, lactonization and reduction with sodium amalgam at pH 3 to 5. One cyanohydrin ultimately yields d and the other yields d -triose. Now let's see this. You have got... I am just zooming this, okay? You have this glyceraldehyde. This one is your glyceraldehyde. And if you add HCN, you will get two types of cyanohydrin, which are epimeric, because this OH is in the right hair, and this OH is in the left hair. So the difference is only about that. Now just react the BaOH whole twice in the acidic medium that means Belita you are reacting with with barium hydroxide then these cyanohydrins that means these CN groups will be converted into COOH carboxylic acid groups now these carboxylic acids this OH will just attack here and will form a gamma aldonal lactone similarly this OH will also attack here and they will form this gamma aldonal lactones. And if you just react with sodium amalgam at pH 3 to 5, then this lactone will be converted into aldehyde group. And ultimately, you will get erythrose and triose. Okay. The, the mixture of cyanohydrins can also be converted into a mixture of aldoses by catalytic hydrogenation and these aldoses can be separated. Nowadays, the technique is applied for synthesis. That means this technique, this catalytic hydrogenation. Okay, let me zoom in. This is the procedure of the catalytic hydrogenation you have this CN and then if you give some catalyst and control the pH of the reaction you will get this imine intermediate CH double bond NH and then add hydrolysis this after after doing the hydrolysis you will get aldehyde Now this is your D arabinose. This one is the D arabinose. If you add the HCN and KCN, this will just step up. This is a, just a step up reaction. This CHO will give this CHOH, and CN will be added. Then you can get this one and this one. After that, if you add D2 instead of H2 that means instead of hydrogen if you add deuterium then this will become CDO and in ultimate case this will become the CDO instead of CHO 1 deuterio D glucose Wolfram method In case of Ulfram method, 
D fructose can be prepared from D alabinose. Just start with the alabinose and then add bromine water. This aldehyde group will be oxidized into carboxylic acid and then you are adding this acetic anhydride and dichloro SOCl2 that means sulfuryl chloride. I'm confused whether it is said sulfuryl chloride or not. Okay, just leave it. Then you will get this structure where this OH will be converted into OAC and this COOH group will be converted into COCl. Then add diazomethane CH2N2. Then you will get this. Here actually diazomethane is reacting as an. This is actually a SN2 reaction. This CH2 is in the minus state. So this can attack this carbonyl and this chlorine will leave. So you are getting this. If you treat it with barium hydroxide and acetic acid. At first acetic acid then if you give barium hydroxide you will get D fructose. Okay yes this is the structure of diazomethane. I have shown the structure. Here in this canonical form this CH2 is in the minus state. CH2 minus and N2 plus. Actually this is the nucleophile CH2 minus. This will attack the carbonyl.